Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Mr. Blue Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Blu-ray. And um, this is a, a topic I want to get back onto just because like, I'm still on like the, the marathon of it. Um, yes, and this episode of the podcast is dedicated to the Defenders again. <laughs> the first episode of the podcast was actually talking about the Defenders, specifically the the original Blu-ray releases, right? But um, this is going to be similar to like the live stream I've talked about, talking about the entirety of the Defender Saga series. But I I, the, I promise you guys, it's I'm not going to go too in depth into that. Like if you guys want to watch that original one, uh, go ahead and check it out. Um, and of course for this episode. Um, I'm no longer going to play it safe because if you guys know in the past, like, um, especially in recent years, when I say like political agendas, like that's sugarcoating it for saying like the freaking left agenda guys. So like, yeah, this video is going to go in hard. So just if you get offended, I don't care, you know, cause like I said, this is more of a conservative channel. So if you don't like the content, then get the heck out of here. So, um, of course we all know that the series started all was Marvel's daredevil and, you can deny yourselves all you want about this, but yes, even though the show has left Netflix, it still remains number one as like the literally the best Netflix show ever. Like you can't debate this. Like Stranger Things, who? Like get out of here with that gay crap. Like come on. Like if there was a page at the very last page at the bottom of the page, Stranger Things would be like the very last, you know? Just saying, because, like, yeah, Daredevil is that good. Like, if you want to get into a mature show, or if you want to get started and watch a mature show, watch Daredevil, guys. Seriously, like, this show, oh, it's it's just that good, guys. Like, I won't stop talking about it. Like, um, of course, I don't like every single one of the shows, guys. Like, again, for example, like, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. We'll get into those in a while. I don't think, I don't think I'll go into, like, the seasons in depth, like, um, like, I'm not going to go in timeline-wise, or just, like, maybe, like, how the shows were released. Like, just going from, like, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, etc., etc., right? Um, yeah, I, I do believe that everybody should uh, watch this show, even uh, Christians, you know? Like, um, seriously, I want the Christians to have, like, a good um, experience on the show. I want them to talk about the show, you know, like it, this show is literally about like Catholicism. So like, uh, like close to Christianity, but like there's like similarities. So again, if you want to watch a good show, like this show is right for you. Even Charlie Cox nails the performance. Like, geez, like, um, maybe they got inspired by the daredevil movie from 2003, right? But of course they wanted to like degrade from that, like move it from that. Like I could definitely tell with, um, was it the Punisher? Like the, the whole series, I could definitely tell that that show got heavily inspired by the two old movies. Right. Um, so yeah, the cast is great. You know, Foggy is great. Karen page is great. You know, even the Kingpin, like, man, um, I'm still bummed out that they, had to kill off, like, uh, Ben Yurick at the second to last episode of the first season, right? It's very unfor unfortunate. At least they did Ben Yurick justice in, in that show than what they did to him in the movie. Like, they made him, like, a, a complete a-hole, you know? So, yeah. Um. So, yeah, um, if you guys haven't watched it, yeah, I did release my season three, kind of like, kind of like overview. Like, I did a marathon finally of season three, and I, I have told you guys that the third season is my favorite. You know, um, you know, it, it's it's good where we like we pick up where we left off Matt Murdock from Defenders, and like he's completely on his own, and you know all that all that good stuff. Like, man, even the end. The end of the episode where he's literally about to take out the kingpin, right? But like, man, that's heavy. Like, even even the first time when I when I watched that, like almost two summers ago now, I felt like like heavily like impacted on on that just because like again how how good that scene was, you know. Like, if you ever talk to any Daredevil fan, you know they they will tell you about that scene and why that scene is so important, right? 
And that's something that I hope that they, they, they'll continue to carry on in Daredevil Born Again next year, right? Honestly, I'm hoping that they'll bring that formula back, like the cinematography, like the one shots, um, limited use of special effects, right? Um, I love the MCU, but when it comes to, when it came to some of their projects in recent years, like they went overboard, like, there's no need to over CGI the characters, right? Like, um, let them do their practical stunts, right? And again, with actors, like it, when they're limited, like that, that's when you could use the CG, like use your advantage to like, oh, here's some of these stunts that they couldn't do in real life. Like, um, yeah. And you know, with, with the She-Hulk episode, which by the way, everyone can agree, like episode eight is the only good episode of of that show because of Daredevil. Like I, I could tell Charlie Cox and the Marvel team, they wanted to test out the waters with how to use Charlie in CG. And it looked pretty good. You know, um, it looked like they didn't like, you know, overuse the CG, but like, again, that's what I'm afraid of. Like, what if they overuse the CG in born again, you know? Um, that's kind of like what, what I've also liked in season three. Like again, born again. Like they've used some of the other uh, story elements. Like um, they showed Sister Maggie. Um, Karen Page was supposed to die, but uh, Father Lant Lantum took the hit. Like yeah, I'm not ready for Karen to die not yet. Um, and they were delving more into Karen Page's past. Like um, she kept talking about like her her drug abuse, right? Like in more of the episodes in season three when we got that episode of like Karen's backstory. Like honestly guys, in my honest opinion, I really don't care. Like when it comes to that episode, I just skip the backstory and just go straight to like, you know, uh, present, you know, current day. Like, um, yeah, Deborah Ann Wall, she, she does such a good job at playing Karen Page. Like seriously, if Karen Page was like a, a real human, like I would definitely want to date her for sure. Like, geez, She's just so cool. Um, they did Elektra dirty in this series. Like, in the Defender saga entirely. Like, again, she was in Defenders, right? Uh, they made her British. Like, that's not my Elektra. Like, give me back Jennifer Garner, which we will see in next month's uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. So, yeah, I can't wait. But what, what version are we going to see her from, like, 2003, 2005? I mean, who knows, right? It could be one of the two. Um, yeah, the Kingpin. I've always been, like, fascinated with the Kingpin, like, especially, like, you know, like, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio's take on the character. Like, ever since, like, like, he came back for Hawkeye, right? And when he came back in Echo, like, man, he still has it in him. Like, he wants to make sure, like, that Kingpin is the same Kingpin, right? And, of course, who didn't like Charlie Cox's small cameo in Spider-Man No Way Home, right? Well, two, actually, if you watch the extended cut, which, by the way, you guys need to go watch. Uh, he has more involvement in it. Like, I guess just a little bit, but, hey, it's worth it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Didn't I, yeah, didn't I already say? Yes, uh, Kingpin is in Echo, um, uh, kind of like the other half of the episodes. Daredevil is in the first episode, but, like, in a flashback scene. Still, it's worth it, like, um, some people were telling me, like, hey, the, the suit, it's not the Netflix suit, like, they updated it, like, just by looking it up close, like, no, it's, it's still the same suit, okay? Don't tell me that there's any differences, like, they got out from storage, and, like, they, it's perfect, I do love the uh, the condiment suit, right? Like, that they showed in She-Hulk. Like, you know, like, in the comics, I own the original comics. Like, um, it looked very cheesy, but Disney knew how to pull it off. Like, with the Netflix suit. Like, man, modern day, like, classic suit. Like, man, that's pretty cool. I like that. I really like that. All right, um... All right, into Jessica Jones a little bit here, right? Um, like I said, I'm not going to go too deep into, like, every of the shows. Like, again, if you want to watch the full video, go watch it. Um, yeah, I knew I had a bad feeling about the show. Like, I did not have a good time with both Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Okay, nothing wrong with their characters, right? But, like, the shows themselves, all oh, these shows make me so mad. These types of shows, like, again, uh, made and produced by ABC, right? And made by the same people who made, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Or, like, help, help out, like, Joss Whedon and everyone else, right? 
Um, Jessica Jones is that typical, like, feminist, like, lesbian shows where, like, like, those shows, they just don't give a crap. Like, and they t they treat, like, the males in general, like, they treat us like crap. Like, what do we do specifically? And, of course, of course, what would be a lesbian show, like, without having some, like, a couple of, like, gay guys? Like, oh my gosh, this show could could have done a lot better without the, 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 the pride community guys. Like, yuck. What, like, oh man, that's this is not what the MCU needs. Like, uh, honestly... Like, yeah, that show was going woke, going broke, you know? Like, why do you think people like it the least because of, like, what is going on? Like, um, of course, I don't like Jessica's, like, um, drinking problem, right? Like, um, I just, just don't like it. Um, the Purple Man in the first season, honestly, they should have just called him Purple Guy, you know? <sighs> just make it simple. Um, and, of course, Jessica did not need three seasons. Honestly, if you want my honest opinion... Either the show should never happen in the first place, or they should have just gone back to the drawing board, or just stopped at season one, right? Like, just finish your story in Defenders, right? And just, like, just, mm, just cut it off, you know? For those of you who like the show Jessica Jones, uh, screw you. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, some of the cast members were cool, you know, like, like, Jessica's, like, you know, her best friends, right? Um, of course, oh my gosh. Freaking Jerry Hogarth. They should have killed her off right away. Especially, like, when she was diagnosed with cancer. Like, I'm hoping, like, when they bring back the, Je the Jessica Jones universe back, I really hope, like, they don't show any on-screen death. They just say, they, they, they treat it as a joke, right? Like, oh, Jerry Hogarth, she died of cancer. Like, oh, that's sad. Anyway, yeah, just, <laughs> I don't even like Carrie Ann Moss anyways. Like, jeez. Oh, my gosh. Swear to God, guys, like, it's like, Disney in general is never going to learn, you know, like, I, I know ABC in the past, and I know they're still doing it now, like, they've done this for a long time, like, like, when does it end, you know? Again, Disney, you were supposed to be, like, this family-friendly um, company, right? Like, why did you have to bring these agendas into um, Jessica Jones? Which, by the way, uh, Marvel's Luke Cage, oh my god. Gosh, guys, again, the series could have done a lot better. Like, Disney went there. Disney went there by using the N-word. Like, okay, since when do we use the N-word now, Disney, huh? Are you going to use it again when you bring back Luke Cage's world? Like, again, nobody wants to be put through that, you know? Again, just like with Jessica Jones, I felt so uncomfortable. I had a bad time with this show. In my personal opinion, and I... Talk about this a lot. The only good episode of Luke Cage in general is Season 2, Episode 10. Yep, it's the Heroes for Hire episode. Like, bring in Danny Rand. Like, yes, like this... M Danny made that episode worth it, like, ten times better. Like, geez. And I would even buy it off of, like, the Fandango app, you know? Like, that's it. <laughs> um, But, yeah, uh, Mike, Mike Coulter, you know, he, he did such a good job as Luke Cage. Like, I even liked some of his performance and... Jessica Jones season one, and I liked how they explored his backstory, you know. Um, his original name, of course, is Carl Lucas. Um, I really liked how Netflix pulled off the comic book accurate look, but unfortunately, unfortunately, they had to make a joke of it. <laughs> Luke was like, I look like a dang fool. <laughs> like, I liked how these shows had, like, comic book references and Easter eggs to these, like... Like, they know they're cheesy for an MA show, but, like, you know what? It's worth it. Like, like again, Jessica Jones, when they show her backstory, like, they show, like, the, what is it, like, the jewel costume. And, like, again, with Hellcat in season three, like, they show, like, her yellow costume, but she's like, oh, hell no. Nah. Like, um, again, I'm sure the MCU will pull it off once they bring her back. Like, I'm sure, like, of course, they'll uh, modernize it, right? Like, no doubt in my mind. Oh, man. Pops. I think everyone can agree that Pops was killed off way too soon, or he should have never been killed off in the first place. Like, he was killed off, yes, in the second episode, that's right. We meet him in the first episode, Obvs, and then he gets killed off, right? I like every time, when, like, when somebody swears, he's like, swear jaw, like, <laughs> man. Um, Cottonmouth, like, terrible villain. Mariah, terrible villain. Um, Bushmaster, terrible villain, you know. Um, 
no disrespect to Mershaha Ali, right? Like I loved his performance in, you know, like the spider verse films. Um, and with him coming up with blade, well with blade right now, it's, it's a mess right now. Like I haven't been caught up with blade news as of late, but is he still in or did he walk out? Again, you guys can let me know. Um, and again, I'm not holding back here, guys, but I'll just keep it short and brief like this. Uh, I should have seen this coming, too. Well, I did see it coming, but, like, they, 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 they... <sighs> Still trying to make it a big deal. They were promoting the, uh, the, the frickin' BLM crap, like, frick off, okay? I'm happy that Luke Cage himself is against that, you know, like... We have essentially what, like, a part-time Christian brother-brother, you know, like, and he's against that. Like, that's good. Like, mad respect. Mad respect. Okay, Iron Fist, my second favorite Marvel Netflix show. Man, uh, guys, let me tell you, I was, I was, like, all on this show. Like, like all the trailers, all the teasers came, were coming out, the posters. Like, I was excited. I... I remember, like, the day it came out, I was watching, like, like a first few episodes. Um, but when I got back into the series, and when I watched the full season, like, season one, I'm like, man, this was really good. Like, I, I, I felt like a teenager again after watching that. Like, I was, like, 16 years old back in the day when it came out. Like, man. Um, I did rant about this in a separate video. Um, the last four episodes of season one were just weren't working for me, like, especially with, uh, Bakudo, right? Like, Bakudo was just so annoying, like, I, again, I'm happy that they kill him off in, uh, Defenders because, you know, he's a prick, you know? Uh, Colleen Wing, oh, you gotta love Colleen Wing, you, you, you'd be fricked up in the head if you did not love her, like, come on, like, she is amazing, guys. She is amazing, and the fact that she's another Iron Fist, like, I, I do, I still do believe that multiple Iron Fists can coexist, like, especially, like, if there's three, like, um, there's one that's supposed to exist, um, probably in the MCU, right, like, to teach Danny the ropes, right? So, yeah, once those, all the three Iron Fists unite, like, man, they're unstoppable, you know, I love how when, when somebody possesses the fist, um, they have a different color, like, represents, like, their, their character, right? Like, you know, Danny being orange, Colleen being white, and freaking Davos was red because, you know, hatred. Davos was a big problem in the series. Like, I, th like the season two downgraded for me. Like, I know season two is most people's favorite, like, but, like, Davos was the problem. Like, ever since he came in, like, the last half of, like, season one of Iron Fist, like, honestly... Why couldn't they just have kill him off then, right? Like, season two, honestly, for me, would have been so much better if they did not go with that um, ritual story arc. Like, oh, man, that makes me so uncomfortable, guys. Um, Ward. He had a lot of, you know, screen time in season one. In season two, they, like, grounded his character, which I liked. You know, like, in season one, you like, he starts off as a prick, right? But, like, in season two, you know, he starts to reflect, and he goes to AA, and um, he wants to go on these adventures with Danny, like, or I think Danny, yeah, Danny convinced him to join him, right? So that was pretty cool. Um, Joy, jeez, like... I honestly hope that Danny never had a crush on her as kids and, like, when, when he came back because, oh, man, I think she was already a prick in the beginning, like, even though, like, she was trying to <clears throat> trying to be nice to Danny after the world found out, like, he's really Danny. And, and season two, off the bat, they, they turn her more in, of a prick. Like, oh, my gosh, I think I've said this in the review, too, talking about the shows. Like, when she opens the door, when she meets Danny... And Ward, she immediately, like, I know that, that was supposed to be cringy, but it was just so bad. She's like, hi, Danny. Hi, Ward. Like, I'd be like, girl, that was cringy. Don't ever do that again, please. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I really do think that at least Daredevil and Iron Fist should have crossed over in each other's shows. Like, I know most people expect Daredevil to just be him. Especially nowadays, like, wait a second. You people wanted Daredevil and essentially the rest of the Defenders to be in the MCU and now, like, like, I understand with the MCU now, but you, you need to give this a chance, okay? 
I'm pretty sure Daredevil Born Again will feel like the old show. Because again, next year will be 10 years. The first decade since the first original show came out, right? I feel like Danny could have helped Murdoch out in um, Season 3 a little bit. Just like how maybe Murdoch could have helped Danny in Season 1 a little bit. Like so that they have more of a connection, right? Um, either way... Um, I love how Claire keeps coming into, like, more of the shows, right? Like, not only she's the glue of the shows, but she's more of, like, the Phil Coulson of these. Like, she has popped up in every show, minus Punisher. But you know who has came in every show? Turk. <laughs> they need to bring him back. Disney, if you're watching, you need to bring Turk back, okay? Like, he's too good enough. Like, he can't die. Like, he, he he's your guy, you know? <laughs> I forgot, like, he had, like, one small role in Defenders, but hey, it's worth it. Like, you gotta bring Turk back. I, I, I have a feeling that Turk might be, like, a fan favorite. That's why he keeps coming back. Like, he might be the truest glue out of all of them, even though Claire kind of reunited the, the Defenders together. Like, mad respect for Claire. Like, um, again, how can you not like Claire? Claire is beautiful. Like, jeez, guys. Like, Rosario Dawson, like, and her being Ahsoka Tano, like, Guys, <laughs> like if you agree. <clears throat> oh man, speaking of Defenders, limited series, right? Which I f feel like it shouldn't have been. I feel like there should have been another season. Unfortunately, I hate to say, like, this show has been decent, you know? Like, I think it's been overhyped, like, especially with eight episodes. Like, um... I mean, the main villain was great, right? Um, I can't remember her name right now, but, like, she she was great. Um, Electra was pretty much sidelined, like, um, she's the, 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 the black sky, right? Um, but she quote-unquote dies w with Matt on, under Midland Circle, which, you know, she has the ability to come back after what the frickin' Hand did in Season 2 to those kids. Like, man, talk about sadistic, right? Um, yeah, I, I know she's going to come back, but they really need to improve her character because ever since Daredevil season two, she has been a prick. Okay. Again, she's not my Electra. Like bring back Electra, um, to Jennifer Gardner, make her the main MCU Electra, and then we'll go on from there. Right. <clears throat> but yeah, I definitely love the chemistry between like all four of the characters. Right. Um, Like, you guys know my watch order, right? I, I posted it on my community posts. Like, like if you truly care about the Defenders timeline, like, the, 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 the hand stuff, like, get rid of Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and start watching Daredevil seasons 1 through 2, Iron Fist season 1, Defenders, Punisher season 1, and then watch, again, watch season 2, episode 10 of Luke Cage, then watch Iron Fist Season 2, then Daredevil Season 3, and then The Punisher Season 2. Again, the rest can just go go frick themselves, right? Um, yeah, because the hand has played such a big part in, you know, D Daredevil and Iron Fist, you know, like, that's when, you know, like, the, like these characters are really important, right? And... Why do you think Madame Gal keeps, like, coming back, you know? Like, um, you know, as much as I did not like the other member of the Hand and the Defenders, I felt like they could have introduced him probably in Iron Fist would make sense. Um, yeah. But he was just annoying throughout the whole series. Can't stress enough about that, guys. Um, all right, last show, Punisher. Um, what a great representation of the Second Amendment, right? And I, um, I'm actually impressed how they handled the the situations. Like, they have a you know obviously a stupid senator who's anti-gun, and of course. He's going to say something like, oh, we want, a, uh, how did he, how did he put it? Like, we don't want to remove 
all guns from certain people. We just want to remove cer certain gun, yeah, certain guns from all people, right? Like, oh man, that's how it starts. You say something like that, but then you start moving the like doing that movement more, and then you you take away our guns. Like, what the frick? Remember, ban idiots, not guns. Okay, guys. YouTube, I'm gonna keep saying guns, however many times I want. Bite me. I don't care. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely like Frank Castle's character, like, you know, showing him, like, I was about to say a little bit, like, no, the first half of this, of the second season of Daredevil, like, that was so cool, it was so much better than the Electra arc, and when he came back, for, like, the finale of season two for a little bit, just to help out Matt, like, that was so cool, and then, and of course, in this series, they pick up where he left off, and then months later, like... He's going back to being the Punisher, right? Like, <laughs> again, if you've watched the whole show, like, you know where it goes, right? Um, Dina Madani. Oh, my gosh. Again, how how do you not love her? Like, I wanted her and Castle to hook up in the, in the series. Like, maybe they will in the future once they bring back Punisher. Like, honestly, I feel like Born Again would be the perfect idea. Not just to bring in the Defenders... And start Heroes for Hyper, like, bring back Dina Madani, like, have her more involved in Hell's Kitchen, right? And even though this series is supposed to be the most darkest series, the toning is so light. Because, you know, with um, both Daredevil and Jessica Jones, that the tone is very dark. And Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Punisher, they're light-toned. And Defenders, it was kind of a... It was a mix of the two, right? Um... So, yeah, and I definitely love uh, Ben Barnes as Jigsaw. Well, he's not Jigsaw yet until, like, season two. But, like, he's just so threatening, and then you love it. It's like, how can, like, you're supposed to hate him, but, like, at the same time, you like him. Like, he's just so cool. Um, David Lieberman. I loved how they improved his character in the first season. Because if you've watched the 2004 Punisher movie, you know that they made him, like, into this... To this loser with a bunch of face piercings, like, ugh! <laughs> <laughs> Nearly coughed up a lung. Um, yeah, you don't do my my boy David Lieberman dirty like that. Nope. Can't do that. Um, I think the second season for me is mid, but I, I feel like they were. Again, this is where, like, the movies come in for, like, the series. I, I feel like, um,. I feel like the second season dubbed more into, like, the two original movies, right? Um, if you guys know what I'm talking about, if you, like, you've seen the movies and if you've seen, like, this, the show, like, um, they kind of do, like, a black male picture thing and they do something at the end of the second season, which they do at the beginning of Punisher Warzone, right? So, again, there's a lot of those vibes there. Like, again, I feel like they were more heavily involved with those movies, right? But yeah, um, Disney, you gotta keep um, the Punisher going. Like, you can't filter him. We can't silence him. Like, um, we need him to keep representing a Second Amendment rights, okay? Like, I'm even surprised how you pulled that off with Daredevil Season 2 and the entirety of the Punisher series. So, like, keep it up. Keep it up, Disney. Do us proud. Um... Of course, I want to bring up the original Netflix Blu-rays again. Um, you can't see, uh, guys, but like in front of me, uh, I have the original like Daredevil first season. Um, but yeah, I have all of the original Netflix Blu-rays, like even even the crappy ones, you know, like um, um, and I have some of the bootlegs too. Um, I'm really not sure if I'm gonna get the Defenders bootleg DVD though, just because like it's kind of hard to find now, like even hard to buy too. Um. Yeah, I have the bootlegs of the whole series of Punisher and bootlegs of uh, Daredevil Season 3. And if, if you guys are aware, the first season of Iron Fist came out in the UK, actually. So, in a technically, in a weird but cool way, that's an official release. Even if Disney didn't say anything. Well, obviously not the US, but maybe like UK Disney, right? Um, honestly, guys... Um, I really do think that the UK should have continued on with those Blu-rays, even if they're not official for the US, but they, they work. Like, 
they should have released Defenders and the rest of the seasons of the shows, like, yeah. Um, ever since, like, last summer when, when Disney officially announced they're going back to physical media, finally, like, starting off with, like, the Disney Plus originals, and we got on our first eight, actually. I still need to pick up the other four. This gi this gives the Netflix shows an opportunity to get not only re-releases for the original four sh shows, but, like, um, continuing on releasing them. But, of course, if you guys own these, you should know, like, like all of them have Netflix on them. Guess what? They're not going to say Netflix on them. They're going to say Disney+. Plus. Not Disney Plus Originals, but the, 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 they'll just say Disney+. Plus. How I know this is because, like, again, marketing, like, and, and the longtime fans, like me, for example, like, we'll know, like, oh, that's, that's smart, you know, like, even though, like, they're not going to put the Netflix logo on, right? Again, I know Netflix is still releasing some of their projects on physical, like, I've seen some on DVD as of late, like, okay, but, like, these, these Blu-rays are worth it, even if, like, some of these are, like, terrible, like, they're still worth it and nice to have in your collection, like, and they, they will go up. Like, seriously, can you imagine, like, the first three seasons of Daredevil in steelbook form? I know that's going to happen, guys. Like, um, I think Disney is really testing the waters. Like, okay, if people really care about these releases, then we could just release these simultaneously, let's put it that way. Like, um, I feel like their next wave of Disney Plus physical media should be the Netflix shows, right? I think their next four should be, like, re-releases of Daredevil Seasons 1 and 2, Jessica Jones Season 1, and Luke Cage Season 1. Like, um, just for, like, anybody who's new fans of the shows and didn't pick up these, like, in, in person and they want to get them, but, like, get them in steelbook form. Again, that's best marketing. Like, good strategy, guys. Like, see? And, hey, great minds think alike, right? Like, if, if we're both on the same page, right? Um... Yeah, I really do feel like, like, after, like, this second wave, like, I feel like Disney should take a break from the Disney Plus originals and go back to the Netflix route, like, um, so, re-release the first four, then release Iron Fist Season 1, Defenders, Jessica Jones Season 2, and Luke Cage Season 2, and then do another wave, Iron Fist Season 2, uh, wait, did I ever say, yeah, uh, no, 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 no. I, I did this wrong, guys. I'm sorry. Iron Fist Season 1, Defenders, Punisher Season 1, and then Jessica Jones Season 2. And then you got uh, Luke Cage Season 2. There we go. Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3. Um, yeah, Punisher Season 2. And... I don't know, make it, make it, make that wave of 5 series, like, release Jessica Jones Season 3. Or if... if if you want to make Jessica Jones Season 3 part of, like, a four-deal thing, like, maybe, like, yeah, Jessica Jones Season 3 and, and uh, other three would be, like, three um, Marvel Studios to see plus shows. Like, again, Disney, they have, like, the, the greatest minds in there. Like, they, they know how to strategize this. Like, again, they know what's the fans. Like, they know what's really popping. They know what's popular. Like, yeah. Although, I am still disappointed that they did not release them, like, how they were originally released on Disney+. Plus. Like, um, you know, WandaVision, they got right. That was the first Marvel Studios Disney Plus series. Loki Season 1, I can understand because that show was one of the popular shows and Season 2 was coming out. Um, I thought they did such a great job with releasing The Falcon and Winter Soldier and Moon Knight. Coming, like, again, like, those two are popular as well. Um... Again, I like how they strategize when it comes to, like, release two of Marvel, release two of Star Wars, right? But I feel like, I feel like they're going to push the boundaries of that, like, um, maybe, maybe they're trying to get all the Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm stuff out of the way and then trying to release their other stuff because they wait, like, a year or two to, um, get their stuff out now, right? Like, um, when Mandalorian came out, right, the first season, we were expecting a Blu-ray release, but now, um... Like, four years later, we finally got the steelbook for it, right? Seriously, I could talk about physical media at Disney, like, all day, guys. Like, I'm happy that Bob Iger came back. Like, he has common sense on, like, he knows what we want as fans, you know? 
But Disney, don't feel like you have to rush out your every Disney Plus originals out in physical, right? I feel like most of them shouldn't need a Blu-ray slash 4K release anyway. Like, release some of the ones that are worth it. Like, Disney's Clouds, like, release that one physically, if they haven't already. Um, I have on my wish list digitally, but, like, who knows? Um, either way, it's a it's a great time to be a, a Defenders fan for sure. Like, um, yeah, back in the day, both the MCU movies and the Netflix shows they're arguably debatable. Like, which one's better? Like, you like, oh, the movies are better, or oh, the quality of the Netflix shows are better. Like, why not both? You know, um, I'm sure there was. I'm pretty sure there were some non MCU fans who were fans of. The Netflix shows, right? If they only enjoyed these shows and not the movies, like if they not watch the movies, like that's fine, you know. And there's there's another group too. Like there's some people that enjoy the movies more than the shows, you know. And with Secret Wars right around the corner, like if that's one way to bring the Defenders back, like fine, fine, just do what you gotta do, Disney. Just don't frick it up, okay? All right. Um, it felt it felt like this episode was going like forty minutes. Well, it's about to. Um, so I'm I'm gonna wrap this up. So uh, thank you so much for listening into the to the newest episode of the podcast, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Please turn the post notification bell and share my content if you haven't already. And I just wanted to like, uh, you know, make something for you guys before I get my Agents of Shield review. Out. Don't worry, guys. It's almost done. Like it's in the works, but I'm almost done with my uh, research, right? Um, yeah, I don't know how long that episode's gonna be, but I promise you guys, it's gonna be worth it. And if if that's gonna be the next episode, then so be it. Let's do it. We gotta we gotta talk about Agents of Shield, and I know those those guys will come back for sure. All right, uh, you guys know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Please send the post notification bell and share my content if you haven't already. And uh, seriously, guys, give me some suggestions in the comments where some other, like, stuff you want me to talk about. Like, I've been thinking for a little while, like, I should make, like, just, like, you know, just, like, a talk, you know, like, besides talking about my favorite stuff, like, I've been watching, like, Bradley Stephen Perry's and Jake Short's podcast, like, the, the sit and chat, right? And they, they just talk about, like, basic, like, day-to-day -day things. Like, that could be cool. Um, if I find some topics to talk about, like, I could do that. All right, again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much. May the Lord be with you guys. Always love you guys. Peace out, guys. And uh, remember, Avengers Assemble. All right, you guys have a good night. Bye, guys.